Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? Product review videos are very common on YouTube and I've done my fair share of them. But there's actually a lot more to it than simply getting a product and offering your opinion. Stick around and we'll talk about what goes on behind the scenes. So I need to start with a little bit of a caveat on this one in that what I'm gonna be talking about does involve some local or kind of countrywide laws. I don't know all of them for all the different countries and locations around the world. So what I'm gonna be speaking about is largely based on the way it works in the United States, but I think it's actually a very similar thing elsewhere in the world. Something that I also need to clarify right off the bat is that there is a difference between product reviews and sponsored videos. Sponsored videos are basically advertisements, which makes a lot of sense, but it is kind of a slippery slope and the people doing sponsored videos have to be very careful to make it clear that what they're offering is a sponsored video. What I mean by that. So sponsored videos generally work where a content creator wants to make some extra money. They need to make some extra money. Maybe that's what they do full time is create videos and unfortunately ad revenue from YouTube, from AdSense has been continuing to go down. So content creators generally need to start diversifying their income. And I don't blame them for doing that. So in the case of any you know random content creator, maybe they talk about a topic that is pertinent to a specific, you know type of product or manufacturer or whatever. And the manufacturer reaches out to that content creator, says, hey, you're a pretty popular content creator. Uh, you get a lot of views, you have a lot of subscribers. If we give you a thousand bucks, will you do one or two videos about our products? That is a sponsored video. That's where there is direct compensation in exchange for creating a video. And usually there are some strings that get attached to a video like that. Um, typically the, the, the sponsor will provide a product or something to show or give the, the talent, the, the YouTube creator, some direction in how they want the video to work out. Whether they want that, that content creator to simply talk about the product or demonstrate it in use, something like that. But you'll also find that in general, those sponsored videos are always going to be positive. Um, you won't really find much opinion in those videos um, it, it, because the, the, the company paying the money, of course, wants the product shown in the best light possible, right? That's what they're paying their money for. So sponsor videos have to be labeled as such. You can't just put a video out there getting money for it and not explain, hey, I was given this product, I was paid this money to say these things, right? Some people have kind of a negative connotation of sponsored videos. Um, you know, it's when they say people are shills or sellouts or whatever. You know, before I created videos, I, I, I may have kind of fallen more towards that camp, but now that I see how it works, what the actual process is, what the, the struggles that modern content creators, not even just on YouTube, but people running uh, websites and blogs, that sort of thing, what what you go through for your craft, I, I kind of understand both sides. And I don't have a problem with sponsored videos as long as they're clearly marked. And a lot of YouTubers do this right. A lot of them make it very clear either by labeling it in the thumbnail or including the word sponsored or something in the title of the video. Some of them will even just straight up say it right towards the beginning of the video. This video was sponsored by so-and-so company. Um, they do it right and that's the way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to disclose that. Unfortunately, some YouTubers don't do it right. And this is one of the challenges, I think, of a platform like YouTube. Traditionally, if you're in the media, you're gonna have gone through some sort of formal education for it, some sort. Not necessarily you got you know a degree in it or whatever, you didn't go through journalism school or something like that, 
but you've gotten some sort of direct training, someone who has told you, this is how this works. So, you know, in television, you, you, you couldn't just like, you know, create a, an episode of television or, or some sort of infomercial or whatever and not make it obvious that that was paid for by a sponsor. You know, the, you always had other people who you worked with who had that experience and said, no, 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 this is the way you do it. You couldn't really ever create a TV show on your own. You know, there, there really wasn't, in terms of like mass market TV shows, what you'd get off of a major broadcast or cable channel, there's really never one person that makes those. YouTube is completely different and the name kind of makes it obvious. YouTube, there's really, in a lot of cases, only one person involved in that video's creation, start to finish, all aspects of it. I'm the only person who has anything to do with the videos that I create. In terms of writing them, scripting them out, shooting the video, editing the video, being the talent that appears on screen or does the voiceovers, uploads the video, deals with all the comments and, and criticisms and all that, I do 100% of it. And the problem is you've got a lot of other people who don't know the nitty gritty of how you handle videos like that. They, they pick it up as a hobby. And I'm not saying that it's bad that they're picking it up as a hobby. It's, it's actually what makes things great. Um, it what gives you the diversity of content. But the problem is, is because these people picked it up as a hobby and they're doing it entirely on their own, they generally don't have anyone or any you know, prominent resource to explain to them, look, this is how you need to do this. So that's the first thing is sponsored videos. The other one are kind of the more traditional journalistic style product reviews. There's a couple of different ways that this can go as well, but in any case, in any event, if the manufacturer or supplier or whatever gives a reviewer money for that review, it's no longer a review. It's a sponsored video, it's an advertisement. If there's ever money changing hands. So with no money changing hands, there's a couple of different ways that reviews can go. The first one is where the reviewer goes out and buys all the products themselves. They spend their own money, they just simply buy products that they think are interesting and they offer their honest opinion. And this is, this is great. That's a really good way to do it because you're not bound to anything, right? You don't have to answer to anybody. If you think a product is legitimately just junk, you can say in the video, this product is junk. And there really aren't any ramifications to it, right? Even if the manufacturer doesn't like that you're calling their product junk, well, sucks to be them, you bought it. You know, you, you paid your money just like anybody else. The downside to doing it that way is, in general, loss of access. Um, I've done reviews both ways, which gives me that nice perspective where I can kind of see both sides, the pros and cons to it. What I mean by access is, obviously product reviews get the most attention when the product is new. When the product has just been released, it's brand new. People are wanting to learn about it. Um, it's the new hotness, they heard it just came out, but they wanna know, does it, you know, is it worth buying? If a product is brand new, sometimes access to it is difficult, especially if it looks like it's gonna become very popular. What we've also seen is sometimes reviews come out even before the product becomes available. Um, for example, a lot of times you'll see reviews of the iPhone right around the time when it actually gets released to the public, but those reviews come out a couple of days ahead of time. It, you know, if, if you've got people waiting in line to buy a hot product, one that's very popular, very prominent, it does them no good to get the review after they've waited in line, bought the product, and then discovered on their own whether the product is good or not. So we've seen a lot of these really kind of big reviews the, you know, for, for big products, they've actually come out a couple days ahead of time before the product goes on sale. By working with manufacturers is really the only way you can do those. Um, so that's access. 
manufacturers will go to reviewers that they trust and say, look, we'll give you one of these ahead of time. Please, you know, have your review ready by this date. And doing reviews in coordination with manufacturers is a bit of a double-edged sword. But I think if you're very careful about it, it can work out well for everybody. And here's generally how that works. In my case, since I've got a smaller YouTube channel, I don't exactly have big name manufacturers flooding my inbox with requests to send me stuff to review. Um, I'm, I, I'm not there yet. So for a channel like me to be able to review some of the different types of products that I want to review, I need to reach out to manufacturers. And I do that, not all the time, but periodically. Um, I'm not looking to get product for free. That's not my goal. My goal is not to you know, be sent free stuff. My goal is to get interesting things that I think you, the audience, are interested in yourselves and to be able to offer you an opinion on it. And I do my very best to give you an honest and independent opinion on that product, whether I think it works well, what I think its use case is, who its target market is, and whether it works really well for that target market. So I'll reach out to a manufacturer, usually to their marketing or PR department, say who I am, ask them if they ever offer product samples. Now, I don't outright ask, can you give me free stuff? Because I don't expect to get anything that I can keep for free. That's not my goal. I don't want to fill my closet with free things. I simply want access to products that I can't otherwise afford on my own. I've done a few reviews of more expensive products, and I've made it clear in those reviews that the manufacturer provided those to me. And that's the biggest thing that you need to do with a review when you're working in coordination with a manufacturer, is you have to disclose those as well. In the US, it's actually a requirement. The Federal Trade Commission has this list of guidelines as to how, when, and where you need to disclose if you've been provided a product for review. Now, the reason why you need to disclose is, is kind of like a caveat for your, your audience. Some audience members may then take your review with a grain of salt if they realize that you were given the product versus you having gone out and bought it yourself. For some people, they think that being given a product results in a loss of impartiality. And in some ways, that's true. And I think in general, it's just more of a courtesy. Uh, to your audience to just let them know, look, I didn't pay out of pocket for this thing, the manufacturer sent it to me. But if it's a reviewer that has generally given fair, you know, balanced, honest reviews, it shouldn't really matter whether they bought the product themselves or whether it was provided to them. But maybe, you know, in the case of a reviewer you've never heard of before, a video, you know, a channel you've never seen before, you don't know how good of a job they do. So it's that nice courtesy to be given that disclosure. Hey, I got this for free. Take it as you will. So disclosure is really important. And just like with the sponsored content thing, unfortunately, a lot of YouTubers and kind of independent content creators don't necessarily know you need to do that. And that's where a lot of YouTubers can get in trouble. One thing that also needs to be kept in mind on the part of the person doing the review is you don't really want to burn bridges. And this is where things get very difficult. Product reviews are actually some of the hardest videos for me to do. You may think they're incredibly easy, right? You get a thing, you look at it, you form an opinion, you write a script, you shoot it, you edit it, you upload it. But it's actually a lot harder than that because I've got to I don't want to say that I have to play both sides, but I've got to keep everyone's interest in mind when I create a review. I need to keep, first and foremost, the audience's best interest in mind, yours, because you're the ones who are looking for that impartial information about the product to make a purchase decision. That's really what it comes down to is a purchase decision. And I don't want to lead you astray. 
I don't want you to think that a product is awesome that really isn't. You know, I don't want you to think that a product is going to fulfill your requirements when it, it won't. So first and foremost, I have to write things in a way that is fair to you. But I also have to write things in a way that's fair to the manufacturer because I don't really want to burn a bridge. I don't want to burn a bridge with that manufacturer because one, that would prevent me from being able to work with that manufacturer again in the future. But I also don't want to work, burn a bridge with that manufacturer because it may send signals to other manufacturers that I'm not someone that they should be dealing with. And that comes into the third thing is I need to be fair to myself. I need to make sure that I'm able to continue to do what I do. I wouldn't be able to do some of the reviews that I've done without the participation from manufacturers. And I'm very grateful for a lot of those manufacturers who have sent me product because they took a chance on me. Really, I mean, if you look at the size of my channel, they, they had no compelling reason to want to work with me on a review but they did because they saw the potential in the channel, they liked the quality of the videos, they saw that I really try to put a lot of effort into it other than taking a thing out of a box and giving it the thumbs up and saying go buy this. And I appreciate that from them. And I appreciate from you, the audience, the privilege to be able to do this. You know, you're, you're, you're understanding your patience that I can't always get a review to you as fast as I want because it actually takes a long time to do those reviews. I don't know if I've mentioned it in a previous video of, of really any sort, but creating these videos isn't quick. Um, one of my kind of, you know, regular full featured videos where I do all the, the editing and the voiceover and the high quality video and all that, basically something that isn't one of these where I'm just talking to the camera and the windshield, it takes me anywhere from eight to 24 hours of work to put an episode together, start to finish. Reviews are always towards the end of that spectrum because I also have to do a lot of research. A lot of times when I'm actually working with the marketing people at a company, it's not just, hey, can you send me this thing? Here's who I am and what I do, but also asking them questions about the product. Who is the intended audience? You know, what, what's your target market? What are you trying to achieve with this product? asking them about technical specifications of it. They may be even deeper than what's in any sort of printed published specs because I want to understand that product in an inside and out. I don't want to just take a thing out of the box and look at it and go, well, looks nice, go buy it. I want to understand deep down what the thing does and who it's for. And that's a really tough part of being a reviewer is it just takes a lot of homework. So, you know, in general, you're, you're kind of walking a tightrope when you're working with manufacturers on product reviews. Obviously, you've got to be fair to them. And you've probably seen in, a, in the vast majority of my reviews, I'm not going to come out and say this product sucks. I'm just not, because that's not fair to me and it's not fair to the manufacturer if they sent me something. But also keep in mind that it's not really me you know, cheating or something like that and saying, well, I'm giving them a pass. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to be critical where I'm critical. And I've had reviews where I've been critical of a product. But the other thing is, is just because the product doesn't work well for your use case, doesn't mean that it won't work well for somebody else's use case. I'm going to give you an example here. Those earbuds sport earphones that I did a review on. I was a little underwhelmed with those earphones. But just because I'm underwhelmed with them doesn't mean that somebody else would be. Um, one of the things that I wasn't too thrilled with was the sound quality. Well, maybe that's just because I happen to value good sound quality. But if you need a pair of sport earphones just in, to listen to audiobooks, and the thing that's more important to you is the fit and the comfort, and you don't care so much about the sound quality as long as you can hear the audiobook that's good enough for you, well, then the fact that the, I don't like the way they sound is completely irrelevant. So that's why you'll see, you know, myself and a lot of other reviewers, a lot of other reviewers are this way as well. I'm not going to come out and just say, you know what, this product sucks, because it's very rare 
for a product that gets reviewed to be horrible at every single aspect, to have absolutely no market to anyone. That's really rare. In general, there is going to be at least some niche that will find a particular product useful for them, even though it may have caveats to other people. I guess is kind of the best way to, to, to describe it. So, and that's, and that's really where being fair to a manufacturer comes into play, right? As long as you're not trash talking them saying, this manufacturer sucks, this product sucks, if you are fair in your explanation of the product, I think it works well for these people, it may not work so well for these other people, then generally you're gonna do fine. Um, and again, I'm very appreciative of all the manufacturers that I've gotten to work with. Um, it is a little bit frustrating when you send an email to a manufacturer asking them, you know, do you wanna work with me on a review and they just flat out ignore you. Um, although I do appreciate it when they reply back and just say, yeah, sorry, you know, we don't have anything for you at this time. And before I wrap up, the other thing that I wanna say is just because a reviewer works with a manufacturer on a review to get a review sample, a product in the review, doesn't mean that that reviewer keeps it. There have been occasions where I've had to send product back, um, where a manufacturer will provide an item simply as a loaner, as a trial basis. And a lot of manufacturers actually will set aside products in a loaner or review pool where that's the way they do it. Maybe because those products are too expensive for the marketing department to be able to just, you know, continue to give them out. You know, maybe they only have so much of a budget. Um, so they, they, you know, have a, a, a lot of them that they use internally and they simply rotate them through reviewers. You know, they give you a month or two to check it out and then they send you a shipping label and you're expected to send the product back when you're done. Um, it can work both ways and I'm fine with either way. Like I said, I'm not looking to fill my closet with free stuff. I'm not looking to get free things for myself. I'm just trying to get access to products that I can't otherwise afford because I think they're products that are worthy of a review but haven't been given a good review. And, and what I mean by a good review is a solid look at, something other than just an unboxing and, well, this looks nice quality, thumbs up. Um, I want to try and go deeper. I want to try and provide some value with the reviews because otherwise I think I'm just wasting your time and which means I'm wasting my own time. So that's generally how reviews work on YouTube. Uh, you are supposed to disclose and there are certain guidelines for how you do that. And it's not just YouTube, it's really any other thing where you're doing a review if you get given that product. If you buy the product yourself, you don't really need to disclose that because it's kind of assumed you bought and provided the product yourself. It's really only if you're, you, you were given that product, sent it in, whether you keep it or loan it, whatever, you just need to disclose, hey, I worked with the manufacturer. Unfortunately, some YouTubers have went out and created their own videos helping explain to other YouTubers how to go through this process and they provide wrong information. They say, you know, if you do this, you can, you can be given all this free stuff and it's awesome and you can get all these things that you've always wanted and they explain how you need to, you know, kind of help pump up the manufacturer and make their products look better and all this kind of stuff and that's wrong. There's a, there's a big difference between basically being paid to do something, you know, whether that payment comes in the form of money or compensation of some sort, and being provided a product as a professional courtesy to give an honest review. Um, and I, I hope, and my goal is to stay firmly in that kind of latter camp. Um, I, I wanna do this right. I wanna run the channel in a legit fashion. Um, I don't want to be seen as just creating these videos because I want stuff. I don't, if there's something that I need for my own personal use, I can buy it, right? I mean, it's not like I'm eating ramen for dinner every night. If I need it, I'll buy it. But there's some stuff that otherwise is just kind of out of reach considering I really want the channel to be self-sufficient if, if I possibly can get it. So here's my question for you is, 
what do you think about reviews on YouTube? Have you seen many YouTube reviewers doing things right? Have you seen many of them doing it wrong? Um, have you seen like those videos I'm talking about where they're providing advice to other content creators as to, you know, how to get all this free stuff for kind of the wrong intentions? Have you seen much of that? Um, let me know down in the comments, you know, what do you think about the YouTube and, and social media in general kind of product review scene? Do you think there are other things that reviewers should do when they're creating their, their content? Also, as always, I am looking for suggestions for future videos. Leave those down in the comments. Um, I look at all of those suggestions. They all go on a list. I may not get to it right away, but I do review the list periodically when I decide each week what I want to talk about. So if there's a particular topic you want me to talk about in a future episode of this blog series, go ahead, leave that down in the comments. If you like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Those help quite a bit. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know why you haven't, you should because you'll get notifications every time I upload a video. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.